Yesterday we talked about the dogmatic constitution, Lumen Gentium, chapter 8, that John Paul II often taught about. That was the key for his idea of maternal mediation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And chapter 8 of Lumen, Lumen Gentium gave Mary titles, advocate, a gediatrix, mediatrix of graces. And so we continue to go to her to be our advocate, our guide, to help us decide what's right or wrong, and to help mediate to us that unity between God and man. Now, of course, Jesus is the one mediator between God and man, as 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 tells us. But Mary participates, as we are all called to, but in a singular and unique way. We see this is not something that is shocking. If you will remember in Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel comes down to Mary, our blessed mother, and he says to her, you will conceive a son, and your son will be great. He will be a descendant of David, and you shall name him Jesus. And Mary says, how can this be? I do not know man. He says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it will overshadow you. And Mary says, of course, I am the handmaid of the Lord, may it be done to me according to thy word. Why are we not afraid of consecrating ourselves to Mary, of entrusting ourselves to our mother? We are not afraid because we are not the first ones who have done this. Okay, then who was the first one to do this? You might ask Father Edwin. Was it Louis de Montfort? No. Was it Maximilian Kolbe? No. Was it Mother Teresa? No. Was it John Paul II? No. The Annunciation reminds us that the first person to entrust himself completely to the Blessed Virgin was God himself. Just think about that. God himself, when he became man, Jesus in the womb, right there, how vulnerable, how special. Entrusting the Father entrusts the Son to the womb of Mary so that Jesus may be born into the world and be its Savior. Not from some outward kind of thing, but having an intrinsic knowledge of what it is to be human, so he could experience everything that we go through except sin. What a beautiful gift. God entrusts himself to the Blessed Virgin, and even waits for her yes. She says, may it be done to me according to thy word. What a beautiful truth. And so we need not fear our own consecration to our Blessed Mother, our own entrusting of everything we have to the Blessed Mother, because God has already called us to that in the Annunciation. This is one of the premier things that John Paul II said. He says, as the messianic mission of her son grew clear to her eyes and spirit, Mary herself as mother became ever more open to a new dimension of motherhood. That as she conceived Jesus in her womb, she walked with him at every moment, even to the foot on the cross. And when she is at the foot of the cross and she sees what great love her son, who had entrusted himself to her, has for all of us, her heart too was transformed was even more awakened with that love of him on the cross as she offers him back to God the Father. And it says this, Has she not said from the very beginning, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, may it be done to me according to thy word. Through faith, Mary continued to hear and to ponder that word. Thus, in a sense, Mary, as mother, becomes the first disciple of her son, the first to whom he seemed to say, follow me. And that as her, she's there on the cross, offering him up once again, she is the first person to be called to follow in this new way. And she's right there with them, with the apostles. And we're going to talk more about that, that even at the cross, she is there, and she's there at Pentecost, and she continues to show what it means to follow after Jesus. But we rejoice because God's already entrusted himself to her. And so we too, seeking to be with God, entrust ourselves to
to her as well. And then we find that union because she is maternally mediating us to God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.